Hey guys, we're back with more electrical knowledge. Now reminder, this is part two in our two-part series. If you haven't already watched part one, go back. There should be a link either here or here, maybe there. Uh, go back, watch that. That one's going to cover all of the definitions of each electrical component, and it's going to give you a compare and contrast in the differences between different uh, types of electrical components. Today, we're just doing an easy walkthrough of our electrical board and how basically Basically everything interacts and is tied in with each other. So let's jump in. Now just a reminder, I'm by no means an electrical expert, uh, but this is somewhere I researched a lot during our build, and this is our system that we're going to be walking through, which is a system that we've been using for a little over a year now and has been treating us fantastically. First off, we're going to have inbound power, so I'm going to show you the steps of each of our different inbound power sources and how they then transfer into the batteries. Then we're going to cover outbound power, so once the power's in the batteries, how does it go out? into our lights, our systems, our charging devices, etc. All right, so starting with solar, this is our wire coming in from the solar panels on the roof of our bus. That's coming into a 40 amp switch, and this is a marine switch that I highly recommend you kind of use wherever you can. They're a lot more um, expensive than other breakers, um, but what I'm able to do is totally cut off our solar panels by pressing this button, which basically breaks the fuse. It's just a lot easier than getting in, taking off the bolts, and taking out one of these fuses. So you have the power coming into this 40 amp fuse which then goes into the solar charger. For a solar charger we're using Rich Solar's 40 amp MPPT solar charge controller. Now again if you're not sure what all of that means go back to our first video the part one of this series and we'll compare different charge controllers and compare other solar components. The solar charger then does its magic in uh, determining the charge rate and you then have the outbound wire from the solar charger going into another 40 amp fuse going into what I'm going to call our inbound bus bar. The last wire you have coming out of here is just your negative wire coming out of the solar charger which goes down into a negative bus bar. So next up for inbound power, we have our shore power. So this white cable here is coming into our transfer switch. When the transfer switch determines that there's current going in from, from that wire, it's going to do two things. A, switch over any AC power that we're currently using um, within the bus to be based off of the power coming in from this wire and B, the inbound power portion of this is going to be a wire coming out of this transfer switch into our smart battery charger. So that's right here. Once it enters a smart battery charger, you're gonna have two wires down here. The negative that's gonna go to the negative bus bar and the positive along to the positive bus bar, the positive inbound bus bar. And again, this is broken by the fuse. So anywhere you have these positive lines, you're gonna break it by the fuse so that you're protected if the line is passing too, or the cable is passing too much current. Again, into our positive inbound bus bar. And I keep saying this because my system uses an inbound bus bar and an outbound bus bar. We'll get into the outbound positive bus bar in just a few minutes. So the third and final source of inbound power that we have is coming from our alternator of the bus. So this is our DC to DC alternator or battery charger. So on this side you have the positive and negative cable coming in tied directly into your bus batteries. Now there's a fuse on the positive side of this. On the other side you have the outbound power. So the positive line is coming into that same positive inbound bus bar, and then the negative is also ground to the negative bus bar. Now this allows us, again, to charge our, bu our batteries, our house batteries, while the bus is running. Now, something you need uh, in order to identify or tell your charger to turn on is to tie this in directly with your actual bus power panel. So this is different from your home panel, this is the one that actually controls the bus. What this is ultimately telling the charger is that the bus is on, turn on, and start charging. So without that, 
your alternator charger could be drawing power from your bus batteries even when the bus isn't on. So this is super important to tie in so that the charger knows, okay, it's on, now we should draw power from the bus batteries. Once we have all of these power sources coming into our inbound bus bar, we have this big cable here that's going to go down into our batteries to take that current and charge up our batteries. Now for our batteries, we have three 200 amp hour AGM Renogy batteries. So all of the power that's charging up our batteries is going to those 600 amp hours of battery, which means we have 300 amp hours of usable power. Pivoting from inbound power to outbound power, and again, inbound power is any power that's charging our batteries, Outbound power is gonna be any power that we're using that's technically discharging our batteries. We're gonna go from our inbound positive bus bar to our outbound positive bus bar. Now this is all broken by this control switch. Now the reason we have this is if I flip this switch, I cut off all outbound power to all of our systems in the bus. So if I need to work on something on the outbound side, I can just turn that off. If something goes wrong, I can quickly turn that off. So it's a great fail safe to have and to break up your inbound and your outbound power. So on the outbound positive bus bar, power is going to one of two places, which is either AC power or DC power. The first one, if I can see right, we have going to DC power. So if we follow this cable up, we'll hit a fuse and then it goes into our DC power distribution. So any power that's being run off of our DC power system in our bus is being controlled right through here. So that includes our lights and a few of our components. I think our composting toilet fan is DC and we have a few other switches that are also DC. So again, all outbound DC power is going from that bus bar up that cable into this just distribution power and then out. So our second component of outbound power from our outbound positive bus bar is for our AC power. So if we follow this wire here, it's going to plug into our inverter. Now we're running a 2000 watt Renogy pure sine wave inverter. Now out here on this side, we actually have a plug plugged right into it and you may hardwire this in instead, but ours is plugged because it's going right into our go power transfer switch that you see right here. Now if your power system either uses a battery charger inverter combination, which is what we discussed in our last video, or if you don't have shore power, your, your outbound power from the inverter might go straight into your AC breaker box. Because we have this separate transfer switch, we followed along that cable that went into this transfer switch that can determine to cut off the power from the inverter if shore power is connected. And then whether that power is coming from our inverter or our shore power is then going outbound into our AC breaker panel. Now we have a main of 30 amps and two 20 amp switches. Now the right switch controls the right side of our AC power and the left side controls the left side of the bus's AC power. Now this goes outbound to the right side here and outbound to the left side of the bus right here. Now that's feeding all of our outlets within the bus. So that's the power coming in from the positive side of the inverter, but then you have the negative and that also goes down to our negative bus bar. Basically any of these components go down to that bus bar and that bus bar is ultimately uh, grounded to the frame of our bus. So a part of our electrical cabinet that's not actually electrical is this fireball right here. Now what this fireball is supposed to do is if anything were to catch on fire in this cabinet and flames started to touch this fireball or it reached a specific temperature, it's going to explode and extinguish the flames within this cabinet. Now this is just a little extra peace of mind. Obviously we did this all ourselves. We're not professional electricians and even with professional electricians it might still be a good idea to add this as just a little extra safety precaution. So if you follow along on our journeys and you're wondering where does this electrical cabinet ex exist in our bus, it's right here. So we chose to do a cabinet type of a route. Uh, part of this was because it was really overwhelming and I wanted to make sure I had enough room to do it. You may choose to put your electrical in a smaller space. 
if or when we do another build, I'll probably downsize into a smaller space, but what was nice about this is it gave us a very big area to lay everything out. Now, I know electrical can be very, very overwhelming. I'm hoping both of these videos helped you, helped guide you, and taught you a little something about electrical that you didn't already know. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free, free to comment below or follow us on Instagram. Reach out to us directly on Instagram, and I'll be sure to answer as many questions as I can. Cheers. We've included some photos of our electrical system here so that you can pause it on your computer or on your phone, take screenshots, and zoom in. I hope these help.